Hello, today we will look at ertugliflozin. The trade name of ertugliflozin is steglatrol, and I will refer to ertugliflozin from now on with steglatrol. So ertugliflozin belongs to the group of medications called SGLT2 inhibitors. Please check the video about these SGLT2 inhibitors to understand the mechanism of this group of medications. Okay, ertugliflozin, as we said, is a trade name of steglatrol. But when we add metformin together with ertugliflozin, then suddenly we call it seglurumet. And as you can hear, they have very similar names. We have steglatrol and seglurumet. The medication that has metformin in it ends with met, so seglurumet. And in this way, it is easier to remember Steglatrol can be given in two types of doses. We have 5 mg and 50 mg. And this medication can be given in the morning with or without food. The initial dose that we give is uh, always 5 mg once daily in the morning. And if necessary, then we can increase the dose from 5 mg up to 15 mg once daily. Before we start with steglatrol, it is very important that we reduce the dose of insulin and sulfonylurea if the patient is already taking these two types of medications. And the dose is usually reduced by about 50% and the reason why is that we have to reduce insulin and sulfonylurea together with steglatrol because otherwise we can get hypoglycemia which is a glucose level of less than 60 mg per deciliter in the blood and it is also very important before we start steglatrol to check the kidney values, namely GFR. GFR means glomerular filtration rate, which is in simple terms just means the flow of blood through the kidneys measured in milliliter per minute. And if the GFR is less than 60 milliliter per minute, then it is not recommended to start steglatrol. Once we start steglatrol and the GFR in the future goes below 60 milliliter per minute, then it can be given until GFR reaches 45 milliliter per minute. And if the GFR goes below 45, then the medication has to be stopped completely. And this means that the contraindication of steglatrol is kidney insufficiency of GFR of less than 60. Uh, let's name some other contraindications for steglatrol. We have, for example, severe liver insufficiency. And this usually means a child PUC class C or above. And this just means in simple terms that we have a liver insufficiency that we can classify into four main severity groups, A, B, C, and D. And if the child PUC is class C or above, so C or D, then we have to stop steglatrol. Other contraindications include, for example, urogenital tract infections polyuria, which means an increased amount of urine output. And then we have also nasopharyngitis, which is an inflammation of the nasal and throat region. We can also see hypoglycemia, which is a glucose level in the blood, which is less than 60 milligram per deciliter, especially then where we combine with steglatrol with insulin and sulfonylurea. Hypovolemia can also be seen, which is actually a hypotension, which means a blood pressure of less than 90 systolic and 60 diastolic. Due to the hypovolemia, which actually means less water in the blood, we usually get thirsty. And two other side effects are, for example, back pain and diabetic ketoacidosis, which means a pH of less than 7.35 due to the diabetes causing an increased amount of ketone bodies being produced from the liver. And please, always when we talk about side effects, it is very important to discuss contraindications of steglatrol. So contraindications just means that we are not allowed to start steglatrol if the patient has any one of the contraindications that I will mention. So any one that I mention, it's actually very easy to understand. And, and the, the contraindications, if you know the side effects, are very easy to understand. So diabetic casidosis is one contraindication, as we said. This is a side effect of steglatrol, hypotension, which is a blood pressure of less than 90 or forward slash 60. The, another one is type 1 diabetes. That being also, it is very important that we uh, give steglatrol to patients who have type 2 diabetes and not to type 1. So please remember this. 
Severe kidney insufficiency, as we said, a GFR of less than 60 milliliter per minute. Severe heart insufficiency, severe liver insufficiency, as we said, child PUG class C or above. And these are the main contraindications and main side effects of Steglatrol. Let's make a quick summary of Steglatrol, which is the trade name of Ertugliflozin. So Ertugliflozin, as we said, belongs to the family of SGLT2 inhibitors. We have four main types of SGLT2 inhibitors, mainly Ertugliflozin, Dapagliflozin, Empagliflozin and Canagliflozin. And if you combine Ertugliflozin together with a metformin, then suddenly we call it Seglurumet. Steglatro can be given in two types of doses, as we said, 5 mg and 50 mg, and we always start with 5 mg once daily in the morning with or without food. But if necessary, as we said, we increase the dose to 15 mg once daily. We have discussed that it's very important that you reduce the dose of sulfonyluria or insulin by about 50% before starting Steglatrol. And it is also important that you know the contraindications to Steglatrol. This means that in some cases you are not allowed to even start Steglatrol. And the contraindications uh, to Steglatrol are, as we said, type 1 diabetes, diabetic ketoacidosis, hypotension, severe kidney insufficiency with GFR of less than 60 milliliter per minute, severe heart insufficiency and severe liver insufficiency with a child PUG class C or above. And the side effects of Steglatrol once again are nasopharyngitis, urogenital tract infections, polyuria, kidney insufficiency, hypoglycemia, and especially with insulin and sulfonyluria, hypovolemia, which can induce thirst, back pain, and diabetic ketoacidosis. I thank you very much for listening. Take care. Bye-bye.